Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Natty Scene. And this time, we're joined by a different guest, but a guest that we've had before. Damien, Damien Lees, WMBF Pro. Uh, so we caught up with Damien earlier on in the year. We had him on for the first time, and mine and Damien's faces were a little bit fatter, but we were still pretty <laughs> dieted at that point. Now we're very dieted. Uh, we're both at the end of our sort of contest season. Uh, we're both going to sort of, well, we're going to mainly catch up with Damien and, and sort of have a look at his prep so far. Um, so obviously to give you a bit of a background, uh, we've both sort of done the UK, the FBA, UK and interna international finals, which were two weeks ago now. Um, and uh, Damien's actually just competed this weekend, this past weekend and another show as well, as sort of a, a brief interlude into the big show uh, which we're obviously going to discuss which is in two weeks time everything's two weeks um which is in boston for the wmbf worlds which we're both very very excited about and uh i'm imagining we both sort of can't wait now to sort of get on that plane and and, and get there um which is which is something we'll touch on so damien um first things first Obviously, coming into the UK and international finals, uh, this was your first attempt, really, at a full prep for a pro show, wasn't it, right? It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, first, congratulations uh, on winning the UK, mate, uh, in the junior class a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, I think it was tight between you and uh, the right. guy who got second. Yeah. Um, chalk and cheese kind of physiques but um yeah i think the the overall package and that and the way you present to yourself and your conditioning is is what is what really Thank nudge you, you towards your way so um yeah all set for the worlds now so fantastic yeah thank you very much yeah it meant i was just talking to damien off air like how much that that meant to me that title and you know i'm sure that people who follow the podcast probably seen the footage from from the day itself, I've put some of the footage as like part of a, my intro on my videos now because it was it was quite emotional to to win that and I think it it, it did lift a, a lot of weight off my shoulders. Um, you know, knowing that I now have the potential to be like a British champion is is some is something different. Like coming coming second at the at the BNBF was was cool. It was really really good. And I came second to a great competitor. But when you when you you know you step on stage against a, a class of thir like thirteen high caliber juniors, that meant a lot, um, and that's just isn't that right? It's just a testament to the the UK DFBA um, as to the the caliber that we were all up against. I mean, they had to do like multiple sort of phases of calling us out because there were so many of us who wouldn't fit on the stage. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, crazy standard. Yeah, yeah. It's getting better, better every year now with uh, throughout the federations, really. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so first, first time prepping for a a pro show in a sense. Um, I yeah. did you compete with the pros at the WNBF World Finals after you won your your pro card? Did you compete the next day? That's right. Yeah, it was the next day. Uh, where I was, I was slightly just slightly over the the weight kind of, uh, cut off. Uh, what they, they decided to do so I was putting right. the middle weights okay. uh, so it was about a pound and a half difference between middleweight and lightweight so I was um, I, I was out muscle a little bit um, okay. but yeah I competed the following following day and got eighth out of I think it was 13 or 14 athletes sure sure, um, sure, sure. So, but I was happy with uh, the way I looked and everything like that and just to make my sort of like debut on in America the the day after yeah, yeah. still high from from winning the amateurs so yeah absolutely I mean I'm interested to know, so like obviously setting out on this prep, was it, did you feel mentally, like psychologically, any different to when you've done all the, all the amateur preps that you've done? Like when you started it out, did you have any sort of different mental aspect to it or psychological, like the way that you felt towards the prep, was it any different at all? It, it was actually to be honest with you i mean uh, i did start a quite a long prep so i started in in january this year because i had a little bit more body fat to shift okay. um but i, I think for, on the mental side it, it, it was just the fact that it was up another level mm. and um I, it, it was kind of like i was i knew i needed to be a little bit bigger but then i needed to bring the condition as well at the same time um so i mean going into the show it, i felt a little bit of pressure um okay. 
I mean, I, it's, it's a pressure I don't actually mind, but I think it's because a lot of people maybe had expectations and everything, and, and I had my own expectations. And, and also going into the UK show, it, I, I knew I wouldn't be 100%, but I thought um, when I was looking in the mirror and everything that I brought enough um, on, the, on the day, really. But it was only when I was backstage when I realised, you know, some guys were, were there bang on the money 100% um, when you when you look back at the prep and sort of reverse engineer that why I mean I know that we've had a brief chat about it before and, and why that potentially was but what yeah. why do you think that you perhaps didn't nail it for that one because obviously when you when you start a prep you gave yourself plenty of time yeah you, yeah. you really thought the process through and you you essentially ticked all the boxes to get you there on time so so why yeah. do you think that it didn't quite work out the way that you maybe wanted it to i think i didn't with the time scale i had i think i mean i've obviously had plenty of time to do it in but mm. I, I didn't i didn't push as hard as i did for the uh, when i won the world's amateurs because uh in the aspect of cardio um calories carbs i was just basically obsessed with keeping the size and everything like that sure. and trying to come in as full as possible so I, I must admit i was getting a bit obsessed with fullness as well um, and even when people were saying I, I look really full uh, in my head, when I was looking in the mirror as well, I was thinking, I was thinking I'm a bit flat and a bit, bit stringy looking. Whereas people were like, "Well, you, you don't look like that at all," sort of thing, you know. Mm. Um, so I was dieting a lot higher carbs, and I think I was sort of like looking at other pros as well, and thinking, "Well, you know, the, I was looking at what others were doing, and I was thinking, well, they're all on high carbs and things like that." And Really, in hindsight, I should just stuck to, to to what what I know best. What really, works, yeah. What 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 works at the end of the day. Um, so I made a few mistakes and, and things like that. Uh, and then what basically, uh, I think that the UK show was a, a, a big kick up the ass for me. Um, I mean, placing wise, I mean, I got feedback from the judges and, yeah. and I got, what did they um, say? Well, I got a, I got, I got a, a second place, a, a few thirds, uh, and right. I think it was on a tiebreaker with me and Flaviani for third place. Okay. Um, so the tiebreaker went to Flaviani, and uh, coming, no well, placing just behind Flaviani. I mean, it, the placing itself and the, the guys up against it wasn't the problem really. It was just I knew I could be a lot better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, yeah. Flaviani got second to Brian Whitaker two years ago at the Worlds and in, in, in the pro lightweight. So and he wasn't hundred percent neither. Um, no. But you know, Matt who got second, he he was on the money, um, and the, the Italian was just uh, phenomenal, and he'd improved a lot from the previous year, condition wise as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was it was it was, it was kind of like a, a close one between all of us really, but um, that that's the way it is really. Mm. Um, you know. From a from a um, the carbohydrate perspective and dieting down, obviously looking to retain as much fullness as possible. Do you think that comparative to previous years, there was some potential benefits of that and that you held on to more strength than you have done in previous years and, and maybe hold on to more muscle? Do you think there's been any benefit? I think I have, yeah. I think I've, um, I mean, my physique looks a little bit different than it was a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, I mean, although strangely, my body weight is, is not much different. In fact, I'm probably, probably a bit, a, a tad lighter compared to two years ago so in your head you think well you know i mean i brought the conditioning last time so you think right surely i'm the same size but there's just a different look um yeah. you know improvements i've made really um i mean even still now um even though i've sort of like I'm, i think i'm almost matching the world's condition of two years ago now but i'm still on uh, more carbs than than what i got to last time um for example, uh, for example, training days, I'm on 200 grams of carbs per yeah. day now. Uh, rest day is 175, uh, whereas at the Worlds last time, two years ago, it was 150 uh, carbs. Um, so I'm still on um, more, you know, uh, more carbs in that respect. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny how, how the body works. And it, it not, never... Each prep is never the same, really. Um, mm. Especially when you get older, as well. You know, it's um, you, you have to do what it takes, really, just to get in that condition. Yeah. Have you found? Have you found that? Like, it's interesting you say that about sort of getting older as a physique athlete, because I've heard on podcasts now, now and again, and um, from certain people that it's potentially easier or uh, a smoother ride as an older individual to get lean. But the, adv- the, the the strides that you can make in a mass gaining phase or an off season are slower and less obvious. And 
it breeds the idea of potentially staying closer to stage weight in an off season as an older athlete. Um, mm. For example, I think one of the one of the good examples of that this year has been probably Sam Watt. I think Sam Sam has no, noticeably nailed his condition comparative to some outings where he's still been unreal, but yeah. but not quite hundred percent crisp. And mm. I think after sort of delving into his posts. He's been a guy that's realized, okay, I'm not going to push up as much. I've yep. only got sort of a six-month gap between competitive years. I'm going to mm-hmm. stay tighter, um, and then I'm going to sort of make the prep easier in terms of the amount of weight that I have to lose. So mm-hmm. when you look at this prep so far, and you look at your start point to now pretty much your end point, mm-hmm. would you say that maybe maybe in future off seasons you're not going to get as heavy and you're not going to have as much to lose. Would that be something that you might look to do? I, I absolutely 100% agree with you on that. Mm. Um, I, I had a chat with my wife actually after the UK and um, I mean, I said to her, I said, I'm, I'm going to come back to the UK next year actually and uh, sort of like unfinished business, if you will. Yeah, uh, but it I fires you up, right? It does, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I said to her and I said to Lee Kemp <clears> as well, I said, I'm, I'm going to stay a lot lean in the off season um, I'm going to probably stay, if I can, within about 14 to 16 pounds tops. That usually um, is the roundabout where people are staying, I think. Yeah, yeah. And and just and it won't be that difficult to do, really. It's just keeping on track of everything week by week um, while still leading a life and things like that, enjoying your life, really. Yeah. Do you think that um, when you sort of finished the, the season in, in 2015, w- w- was the was because i know that you did sort of quite a lot of competitive years in a row do you think that one of the reasons why you push your body weight up more was to give like your body a bit more of a rest or was it because the off season was a longer off season and you didn't perhaps did you do any mini cuts at all or did you just sort of like go continuous gaining throughout that entire year yeah, it was a continuous gaining, really. I mean, I, I did have a, a little bit of a break to give my body a rest and everything, uh, but I think it was the fact that it was a long off season, uh, and I had Christmas coming up, and I was still reasonably lean off uh, in uh, leading into Christmas following the show, um, and I was tracking everything up until around about April May time, and then from there I, I start I, st- I started. Um, I stopped weighing myself and things like that, and I started just. I was still monitoring my food, um, but if if someone wanted to go out for a meal, I wasn't tracking that, and I, I had a bit more of a free reign, really. Um, and I was thinking to myself, well, you know, the, the the strength's good in the gym and everything like that, and um, I, I was just enjoying myself in the off season, really. Uh, and then uh, gradually over time, your weight just slowly creeps up, um, and then you think, well, I'm going to do a really nice slow prep. Anyway, so I've got enough time to do it in, really. But, yeah, definitely now I'm going to uh, stay a little bit more tighter in the off-season. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mention that. Like, that's pretty much exactly what happened to me. I uh, got midway through the year, really structured up to that point, and then I just was, like, letting off the gas too much. And I, I've actually admitted it in a lot of my posts recently that yeah. I didn't maximise that year as much as I could have done. Um, yeah. And I look back at it in hindsight and I'm like, how, what percentage better could I have been this year if I had? Um, yeah. But then I also look back at it in hindsight and say, what percentage of my social life would I have missed out on? Or what percentage of relaxing, you know? Yeah. You, you've yeah. got a family, haven't you, Damien? So this is it. Yeah. it's yeah. important to note that the social aspect of being outside of a bodybuilding prep is quite important, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. This is it. And, and as well as as well as well uh, being competitive and coaches, you know, I mean, people who, who are watching and listening to this, we are only human at the end of the day. You know, we're not these gods or anything like that. We're not perfect. And we are we are normal human beings who, who live a life as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely. All make we're, we're, all, we're all learning at the end of the day as well. We all keep, you know, pushing ourselves. But we're all also learning at the same time. And we, we never know it all. And we never probably will do, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. So... Yeah, I guess to to bring listeners into the, the very the very present moment in time, we're just over a week away before we actually fly out, and uh, I know that we fly out on the Thursday to Boston, um, yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll get there and we compete on the Saturday. Everything's on one day at this this one, isn't it? So it is. Yeah, it'll be a long have... day, but yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. one day. Yeah, registry yeah. on 
the Friday the day before, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, I mean, when we once we get there, it'll be quite a fluid day of things because obviously it's just Thursday arrive, Friday check in, Saturday compete. It'll be like bang, 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 bang. And I'm yeah, sure yeah. it'll go by in like a, a blink of an eye. But mm-hmm. I'm sure that listeners are, are pretty intrigued as to what your current plans are with regards to sort of where your current conditioning's at. Um, yep. And then obviously going into a potential peak week um mm-hmm. for the for the show how how what's the plan and what's the plan initially not to give you a million questions and confuse the dark brain so what's the plan initially for these next sort of one and a half weeks before we travel out okay yeah uh, well based on the the pictures i've looked uh, from yesterday's show um i think i just need very very minor, a few couple of percent if that now uh just a little bit more on the glutes a little bit more tight on the quads and then i'm there pretty much okay. and a little little bit fuller in some places so i hold chest fullness quite well but and my delts but there's a couple of places where i can get a little bit fuller um but the plan for this week is just a bit more of a push um so the carbs i mentioned earlier um my cardio is 45 minutes in the morning 20 minutes at night nice um so two sessions of cardio per day uh push pull leg split uh, and repeat so it's legs today and then the last legs will be uh friday yeah uh, uh, and then maybe a leg tickle next week just a little bit yeah um so we're going to assess myself um and uh, my two uh, trusted eyes as well mm-hmm. this weekend uh and then they're, they're gonna i've got one guy who lives really close to me um who can f- physically take a look and then nice. we'll decide then what's gonna the best way forward between three of us uh for the for the final week really whether that's going to be eating a little bit more food or just pushing up to a point where we get to about Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll just have a moderate carb up, nothing super high, maybe up to around about four, 450 grams of carbs. Nice. Um, and then Saturday, show day, it'll just be a uh, method what I used yesterday, which is basically grazing. Okay. Uh, and what do you graze so- on? Uh, well, yesterday, for example, uh, it was uh, steak and eggs for breakfast. Okay. Um, and then every hour or two, it was uh, a couple of rice cakes, a little bit of peanut butter, and uh, a little bit of turkey as well. And it was just just simple as that every every mm-hmm. couple of hours. And I, I was holding condition really, really well. Um, I, I got a little bit hungry, and I was tempted to sort of like you know throw the carbs in uh, a lot more carbs, but I just kept it really, really simple. Took some simple sugars backstage uh, while, as I was pumping up a little bit of red wine, uh, and it did the trick. It was a warm venue; vascularity came out really, really nicely. Nice. Um, and then last night when I got home, I had uh, quite, quite a lot of carbs actually. And I woke up this morning; I was actually lighter. Yeah, uh, no surprise there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. typical. Yeah. Um, so going into next week, like I say, it's probably going to be a moderate carb, but nothing fancy. Okay. Just hold hold enough fullness and just focus on that conditioning and, and just bring it because i will need it as well um yeah, amazing. Pro, yeah cool so in terms of the, the final week as well i'm interested obviously you're following pushable leg split i'm imagining yep. training will be normal intensities normal volume this week pushing hard in the gym correct yeah yeah 100 percent this week um and then it's next week it'll probably be monday and tuesday around about 80 percent nothing uh, to failure no, nah, nothing to yeah. failure. Just just doing enough, really. Nothing silly. Uh, no, no, no sort of like PBs in terms of deadlifts or out like that squats. Yeah. Just um, just tick over. Just do enough, really, in the, in the last week. And then Wednesday, will you take off? And then th- Thursday, fly out? Is that sort of the plan? Or will you, do um, any, will, will you do any pump-up sessions when you're in Boston at all? Are you a fan of that? Or do you just sort of rest and eat? Okay, yeah, I'm a fan of that actually. I think uh, I think Wednesday it'll be another eighty percent workout, and okay. then th- Thursday is probably going to be a rest day. Um, but I, I was talking to Lee Kemp the other day, and uh, he did mention that on the Friday, the day registering, he mentioned a few of us going to uh, Gold's Gym on the oh, the Friday I'll at some point. I'll be yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, Friday for a bit of a pump session. Yeah. Uh, so it's just going to be a yeah, pump session Friday. And then we'll be on uh, probably about 9.30 a.m. for prejudging uh, the ah, pros. Okay, so is it uh, pros first? That's what I was trying to work out. It is, yeah, yeah. The order. So fuck, I'm, I'm going to be on really late. So you'll be on later, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be a long day, but yeah, we can we can have a chat and catch up. And if you, like I say, just offline, if you've got any questions, because I've been to Boston twice now at the world. So uh, ah, if you've got any questions about how, how it's run and things like that, usually um it tends to be quite similar okay amazing uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So that's the plan. That's the master plan for the for the last few weeks. So that's really really cool. I'm sure listeners will appreciate that and you sort of get a bit of an insight um, into into what's going on. Um, I think this has been a really really cool catch up. Um, I'm sure that people have maybe a few questions. So if they do, um, please you know attach them below in the YouTube comments. Um, or shoot them across on Facebook, and I'm sure we can get to them and answer them as well as we can. Um, but for now, I think we'll sort of wrap it up. Um, and what we'll try to do is uh, we'll, we'll come back after the Worlds. Uh, we'll check back in again with Damien and myself, and we'll see how we both got on. Um, I know that Damien, the, di- the difference is quite cool because I know that Damien's expecting a really crazy caliber of lineup. Uh, whereas with myself, I literally have no clue. Um, I look back at previous lineups and then I see some wacky teenagers who have like crazy muscularity turning up out of nowhere in some years. And then uh, like some years, they're only, only being three or four competitors. And, you know, that versus the UK being 13 is crazy. Mm. That that would, you know, ideally what I'm hoping for is that you know, at, at least like six or seven competitors would be amazing from different yeah. countries. That would be lovely. And uh, to be honest, like, I'd rather compete against a really solid lineup and be battling than, yeah. you know, be up against two or three. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, But I'm 100% sure it will be a battle regardless because this is this is the world. This is, you know, you, have to, you, yeah. have, to, you have to qualify to get there. There's no... There's no sort of like get get out of jail free card and turn up at world. So, um, what's I, your expectations, AJ? Are, are you yeah. is your is your are you mentally going there to sort of like say I'm I'm happy with top three? Are you going there to say I'm going there to win? I'm mentally going to win, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 expect, I, I expected that. Answer, I, I I like over there. There's a very small two posters you can see. One is the WNBF World poster. Um, they're just right in front of my treadmill, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, one's a WNBF World's poster, and one's a pit, uh, a front lat spread and a rear double from Brian Whitaker. Um, purely because I love Brian, and he's yeah. a WNBF pro, and he won it in 2015. Like, based on the fact that he was just very well presented and peeled, and yeah. that's that's how like. I'm nowhere near as peeled as Brian, but I win shows on the same sort of result. Like, yeah. if I meet someone with more mass, like he, he always meets Siobhan. And Siobhan only beats him usually on the fact that he has more mass and yeah. a bit more flow in some poses. Um, and when Brian is on, on, like he was in 2015, he took it. That that to me is really really cool. So that's why I've got him up there. But yeah, I've um, absolutely yeah. I've had that and as my only motivation, mate. I think he only weighed about 158 pounds, 159 yeah. pounds as well. I mean, it's I think disgusting. the scale's a little bit lighter, but yeah, it's it's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, it's and he just doesn't phenomenal. he he doesn't doesn't really look like a bodybuilder. Like when you just see him like in normal clothes, like with pictures you see online. Obviously, I haven't seen him in person, but yeah. from what like cause I asked Marcos who went in 2015 and saw him visually. I was like, what's he like to look like in real life? And he was like, just mind blowing. And when you see him on stage, yeah, like, you just get blown away. I can imagine it's uh, it's a shame he's not doing it this year. Cause he it is, pretty, yeah. He's been yeah. pretty consistent with doing them, but I, he, he's, um, he, I don't know if you follow his journey, but he's had like a big knee operation recently. He has, yeah, um, yeah, that's it. So yeah. he's actually recovering from that, which is a shame. But, um, Yes, uh, I think um, my expectations, yeah, are obviously to to go and 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 and, and bring it home for the UK. Like that's what I want to do. I think one of the one of the, to to note another one of my the 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 biggest reasons why I was really chasing the UK DFBA title is when I started prep in and when I when I end when I sort of ended my off season. One of the biggest guys I was looking up to was Daniel Park, um, yeah, because yeah. he. He, he, to me, really opened up my eyes as to what's possible from a conditioning perspective and from like a mental willpower perspective, just the way that he did his prep because he did a pretty early qualifier and then he hung on in there for a, for a long time and continued, yeah, getting, was, yeah. continued getting pretty pretty much better for show to show. Um, yeah. And 
that's that's what that's all I wanted to do between these the 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 UK well between my qualifier finals and then the the worlds was to just improve and we've talked about it in the book in in podcasts before where you stay very similar scale weight but you just get tighter and tighter Tight, by tight, yeah. by that of just staying in a in a small deficit which is basically what I've been doing my deficit is very very small but it's just enough to bring a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, yeah. And that's what I've noticed for me is that I can't afford to do what I want to do, which is drop my calories quite aggressively and dig. That's what I've wanted to do for the past like two and a half weeks. But it's difficult, isn't I, it? Yeah, I can't afford to do that because as soon, as soon as I do that, I know exactly what would happen. My All my good shots would start to fade. My fullness yeah. would like be completely go and... I yeah maybe I'd get like top to toe striated glutes but is that going to win over having a really good rear double and a really good rear lat spread and a great yep. side chest side tricep which probably edged me at the UK finals against someone yep. who had more mass right so you've got to absolutely yeah think yeah about it you've got to play on your strengths really and uh, I think you know what you're doing is, is spot on really Thank you, mate. and I'm sure you've got uh, a, a, you, I'm sure you got a very very good chance of taking the, the world title Thank amongst you, other uh, amateur athletes uh, going in there as well so yeah. it's really exciting actually and um i look forward to obviously spending time with you all and um yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's gonna be a great experience cool awesome well guys like i said we'll, we'll wrap things up here i think it's been a really really cool update i'd like to thank damien for spending some time with us and uh especially post show one day post show i know what it's like you're you're mm. trying to catch up on on the weekend trying to catch up on family time and and all of that jazz but thank you very much matey um, hey, you're welcome. and yeah, guys, like I said, any questions, just ask, and we'll check back in probably after Boston. Cheers, Damien. Excellent. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cool. Take care. Awesome. Bye now. Bye-bye.